by region, where we are, um, whether the, as it relates to overcrowding, um, existing, you'll see whether or not there's existing overcrowding. If you notice in the projected overcrowding column, yes, 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 all the way down. And then those indicate the needs that will accommodate that overcrowding. This is a um, summary of the information that we've just shared regarding capacity and condition adequacy just on one slide to show you where the new schools will be, what, excuse me, where the replacement schools will be and where the um, new school equivalents will be when we talked about um, replacing the four schools, McNair being one of them. Those will be the new school equivalents as it relates to the classrooms. School renovations by category um, and bro also broken down by area. Um, when we look at the three areas of Fulton County and what renovations are needed for our buildings, you'll see that in each area um, there's approximately 105 million for 39 schools in North Fulton, approximately 88 million on 22 schools in South Fulton, and then approximately 34 million on eight schools in Sandy Springs, which brings the total to approximately 228 million for renovations. Other renovations that would be funded by Splash 4 are um, renovating our South Maintenance Transportation Facilities. Our South Maintenance Transportation Facilities were built in 1972. Um, we've had considerable growth since that time, and so they were built to accommodate the needs over 30 years ago. And so now we're in a position where we really need to expand that to be able to accommodate the current needs of the school as it relates to the increase in enrollment and just the changes over that 30 year period of time. Also um, looking at consolidating or renovating the administrative facilities to be more efficient and effective um, with our taxpayers' dollars. Furniture and equipment um, in Splice 3 there um, was a slight oversight as it relates to elementary school playground improvements. And so for Splice 4, a portion of the funds will definitely go to for elementary school playground equipment improvements, um, system-wide approach to visitor identification as it relates to um, security. Each school has something that they use, but if we do it district-wide and have a district-wide visitor identification system, one, it ensures consistency when you walk into any <coughs> county school building within the district, you'll go through the same process as well as it'll be a more efficient use of dollars because if we purchase it for the entire district, of course, we'll have savings. Um, wire, improved wireless communication, and that goes a little to the technology, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Expanded replacement and replacement of automated external defibrillators, surveillance system upgrades in our facilities to improve, again, safety and security, um, and especially with, at the front entrances of our buildings where the main office is. Fleet replacement, we talked about the need to often, sometimes replace buses, although we do maintain them to um, proper standards. And then the last, again, being payment of the, on existing debt incurred for the prior to 1997 um, new schools. Approximately $190 million of the projected budget for Splice 4 will go to improving and upgrading our technology infrastructure. Um, we're greatly in need of that. And so a substantial portion of Splice 4 will go to that. In order, the reason why we need to focus on technology is because our current school technology standards are insufficient in today's environment. You know, we're a very digital um, society at this point, and each day there are continuously changes as it relates to the digital world. So we want to make sure that we can improve that to, to um, stay current with today's environment. Schools are also enforced, forced to invest independently beyond this standard, so we want to do, this, do it district-wide and implement it throughout our district, and our current infrastructure does not support the state-of-the-art requirements for wireless technology. So there's definitely a need for us to pr use some of the money for capital improvements to upgrade our technology. How will our students use the technology for learning? They'll be able to access age-appropriate information safely, um, practice safe and responsible internet use, 
be able to discern between credible online sources, access curriculum online, curriculum resources, communicate with teachers online, work in teacher moderated online groups. Again, more support, more support, just not inside the classroom, but outside the classroom as well. Um, utilize computer video and audio recording tools. They'll be able to have assignments, assess assignments and work products anywhere at any time. And also immediate instructional support if when they get home, they forgot how to do the problem, they'll be able to contact their teacher and get immediate response and support from them through upgrading our technology. What technology resources will be available for students? Um, wireless and mobile learning devices for use in school. Um, updated video and audio recording tools. Improved and expanded distance learning, distance learning equipment to be able to have group sessions over the internet, not necessarily within the classroom setting, but outside the classroom setting to again extend the instructional time. Um, virtual space for digital student work. Contemporary communication and collaboration tools and interactive classroom sites. We talked about the students, but how will our teachers and staff use this technology to support our students in their learning? They'll be able to access the student learning and communicate timely information to them, not just about the assignments, but on their progress as it relates to completing the assignments and learning the material. Um, share effective lesson plans across the school system. Access resources for instruction, such as videos and electronic activities. We know um, during this era, teenagers and students just as a whole, even elementary students, are more technologically, technologically inclined. And they use videos and electronic things for a lot of other reasons. So we want to make sure that teachers are able to use that as a way to provide instruction, customize instruction, and engage students through interactive technology. What will the teachers have to be able to allow them to um, provide this type of learning and increase in technology for students? They'll have online student assessments, vir virtual space for lesson plans and curriculum so it can be stored in the clouds so that kids can access it anywhere they are. Um, class and course websites, regularly updated laptop computers, digital projectors, classroom tools to, again, encourage student engagement and to use a medium that they use so often, teachers, student communication and collaboration, and then online professional learning resources. So when we look at the components of the technology upgrade and improvements, um, online resources, mobile technology, interactive instruction, virtual learning, and updated tools for student work, and the infrastructure that will be needed for that, you'll see, is below. And that's what we're going, we'll be able to use um, the projected budget includes about $190 million for us to be able to support this. So when we look at the projected budget for Splash 4, which will be on the ballot November 8th, um, this is a breakdown by category of how the projected, um, the projected expenditures for Splash 4, which total about $912 million. And how would that be funded? There's two ways to fund capital improvements for schools, either through property taxes, um, which is a pay as you go with the millage, um, or a bond referendum, or millage increase to property tax owners. So that's one way. Or the other way is to continue the penny tax that we've had since 1997 to continue to, continue to pay as we go. Everyone shares in the cost of this um, contribution even people who just visit Atlanta, and we know we have a lot of visitors to the city of Atlanta and to Fulton County. Um, it would lower property taxes, and it, the key thing, again, is that it's a continuation of a tax that's been in existence for about 15 years, since 1997. Voters decide on November 8th, so this is information, we hope this information was helpful to you to be able to share and educate um, voters regarding the issue. If you like more information, you can visit FultonSchools.org, and if you have questions, you can email them to that address or contact the number listed there on the screen. Questions? If there are no questions, then let me just say this. Yeah, that's a question. Thank you. I know I'm late getting here.
Leur nom du 